Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the Alliance for a Healthier Generation session. My name is Ava DeBovis, and I'm the National Network Manager with the Alliance, and I'm joined by my coworker, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. I'm a program manager with the Healthy Schools program, and I'm a registered dietitian, so get those nutrition questions ready. <laughs> also, and before the session, Stephanie and I were talking. Coincidentally, we were both Parks and Rec kids. We both went to Parks and Recreation summer camp our whole lives, so we're so excited to hear about all the successes and the ways that those types of parks and recreation programmings and camps and after school uh, opportunities are just becoming that much stronger in our communities and healthier places for kids. All right, Stephanie, so I know one of my favorite memories was when I was old enough to be deemed a junior counselor yes. and got to sit at the uh, picnic table with the other really cool uh, high school counselors. Do you have a memory like yes, that? Yes, well, I ended up becoming a staff member too, so I remember getting oh. my t-shirt with staff on the back. That was a really big deal. And I remember my favorite activity was going to the roller rink. I remember oh. going roller skating. I haven't done that in years, so I guess I need to go back and get my roller skates on. There we go. Maybe they'll let you be a guest counselor one yeah. day back home. <laughs> Great. Well, we're so happy to be here today and to talk with you all, not just because we're Parks and Rec kids, because we think this work is so important. So before we get started, we sort of want to gauge where everybody's at. And I know there's already a poll up and tons of people are answering those questions. So we want to know how familiar are you with the Alliance for a Healthier Generation? Maybe you've heard of us before, you know we're a partner of NRPA. Uh, maybe you're just thinking, oh, that's, wait, is that who's presenting right now? You're maybe not so sure. Um, and then maybe some other folks are our biggest fans and they even follow the Alliance on Twitter. So we'll give it a couple more seconds for folks to come in, but it looks like a lot of people are really familiar with the yeah, Alliance and are great. already familiar with our partnership and our work with um, the National Recreation and Parks Association. So good to know. We'll definitely dive in a little bit deeper though and let you know some more information about the Alliance and all our wonderful resources and tools. All right, so let's go to our second poll question. And that question is, who here is familiar with Commit to Health? now or how familiar are you with Commit to Health? You might be saying, some of you out there, even if you have been tuning in this whole time, that that's, that's the name of the grant that I just won, I think. <laughs> um, other members of you might say that you've heard of it before, you know it has to do with healthier programs, um, that's why you're tuning in today to find out more. Or other people who may be on this uh, webcast today might be saying they're a pro and their family is just sick of hearing about you talk about how it's revolutioning park, parks and recreation. <laughs> Stephanie, where are you in this, uh, this poll, do you think? Well, I'm not a pro. I'm learning so much from everybody today, so I've definitely heard about it before, so yeah. Great. And it looks like that's where the majority of folks are as well, that they, they've heard about it and they know what it has to do yeah. with. But, um, but maybe they're just tuning in to one of our webinars or um, the first learning programs for the first time. Some people too, they just know that that's the name of the grant and that's okay, that's a great place to start from. <laughs> uh, we'll be sure to connect the work that you're doing with your Commit to Health grant, um, or if you're not a grantee, expressing sort of some of the opportunities and resources that you can connect with that are free and available to you regardless of what grant dollars you have. All right, so here's our third and our final poll question before we, we launch right into everything. Um, who here is familiar with the National After School Association's Healthy Eating and Physical Activity Standards, or HEPA as we sometimes call them? Um, some people know that that has to do with maybe serving after school meals. Um, other folks, they've heard of them, but maybe don't have them memorized. I don't, I don't even have them memorized, and I've worked <laughs> with them for a long time. Um, and other folks can recite them in their sleep and talk about the importance of healthy role modeling um, and healthy habits every day. So that's good. Looks like someone's heard of them. That's yeah. great. Give it another minute. And I know there's a lot of different nutrition standards out there. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the way that some of those USDA standards, um, those standards that are happening in schools um, and you know out of school time, how they support and are reinforced by the healthy eating and physical activity standards by the National After School Association. So you can help find those, those common linkages around what other folks in your community might be talking about. Great, so it looks like a lot of people have heard of them. Yeah. Awesome, all right, so let's turn it over to our slides. Great. So the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, um, we want to make sure that we are providing opportunities, resources, tools, staff like ourselves um, to members in the community across the country. We're probably best known for our Healthy Schools program, um, but we also work with healthy out of school time, so before school, after school, summer camps, um, we work in juvenile justice facilities, and we work directly with the food and beverage industry in helping to implement um, 
new recipes, um, offerings, and um, new types of products that help meet the different standards that uh, we work with schools and out of school time to implement. So before we get started though, and here at the Alliance, we don't just wanna talk about healthy eating and physical activity, we also wanna walk that, walk that talk and talk that walk. So before we get started, I know you guys have been listening for a while, we're just gonna take a couple seconds and we're gonna stretch maybe up to the ceiling. Oh, you can do this right when you're sitting at your conference tables, maybe stretch over to the right. Oh, make sure not to poke anybody. Stretch over to the left. Again, don't poke anybody, but maybe stretch forward. Oh, I know we're all sitting at computers, roll out those shoulders. Maybe you want to just stand up a second, shake everything out. Oh, Stephanie's shaking along with me. And maybe last but not least, we're going to oh stretch our feet out in front of us. You can do this sitting at your office chair, sitting at a picnic table. Make sure you roll those ankles around. And maybe let's just take two deep breaths. All right. That was great. And I love to yeah. see sites that actually do this with their staff during staff meetings. Mm -hmm. So that's something great that you can do during your staff meetings, not just physical activity with the kids, but we also want to be doing stretching and movement in our long staff meetings where we're sitting. Exactly. Just like kids, we learn better as adults when we get a little physical activity. So you guys have already participated um, in our different three different polls that we just did, um, but we will ask you to please continue to interact with us via the chat box and the questions. Um, Feel like you can ask us at any time your questions and we'll make sure to get to them either at that exact time or by the end. Don't, don't worry, we'll get to them. <laughs> um, and also, we're all adults here, so make sure to take care of your needs. Allison already mentioned during the last break, make sure your, uh, your water bottles are filled up, that you're staying hydrated, you're taking a little break if, if you're getting too stagnant. So, let's get started. Um, make sure to interact with the Alliance and NRPA on social media. We love Twitter. We can answer your questions via Twitter as well. Just tag it at NRPA, at HealthierGen, or hashtag commit to health. So we've already um, talked a little bit about the Alliance's partnership with the National Recreation and Parks Association, but just as a little bit of a refresh, um, NRPA has partnered with the Partnership for a Healthier America and the Alliance for a Healthier Generation to implement commit to health. Commit to Health is the national movement that looks to implement the National After School Association's healthy eating and physical activity standards in before school, after school, and summer camp programs in parks and recreation agencies across the country. Um, just as a little bit of background as sort of where these uh, standards came from, in 2009, um, a national group of out-of-school time program providers, researchers, advocates came together to form the Healthy Out-of-School Time Coalition. In 2010, thanks in part to funding by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, that group was able to brainstorm um, and develop the healthy eating and physical activity standards and best practices. Those standards and best practices in 2011 were then adopted by the National After School Association. So that sort of flash forward now to 2017. Um, in addition to the National Recreation and Parks Association, Boys and Girls Club of America and the Y of the USA have also made national commitments to implement sets of these standards um, across their membership networks and their programs. So this work that we're talking about with Parks and Rec doesn't just have to do with Parks and Recreation, but really the youth development and programming world as a whole. So no matter where kids go to camp, where they go to after school programs, where they go to school, that they're getting the same really high quality opportunities um, for healthy eating and physical activity. So again, just the Healthy Out of School Time Initiative at the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Um, we help provide out of school time programs across the country with those evidence-based professional development processes, tools, and resources in order to increase children's access to healthier foods and physical activity. It's not just about um, the foods that you're serving and the activities that you're doing, but really that systemic environmental change. So looking at healthy role modeling, family engagement, um, the physical space that you're looking to eat and do physical activity, um, and ensuring that we're learning from each other and we're building on our strengths. So we know that you all are the ones that are actually making the change in your communities, and we want to support you throughout that effort. So you can learn more about the standards, um, the tools and resources that we're about to talk about at host, H-O-S-T, healthiergeneration.org. We'll walk through the website in a little bit towards the end, but I wanted to make sure you have that information before we get going. So um, you might be sitting here asking, okay, Ava, this is like so much information and so much background and I don't need a research paper, but what exactly are these standards exactly? 
So we're gonna take a couple minutes. Stephanie's gonna walk us through some of the healthy eating priority areas, the physical activity priority areas, and the family and youth engagement priority areas. So let's do it. Take it away, Stephanie. All right, so let's kick it off with exploring some of the Commit to Health physical activity standards. We're gonna go through them. You've got them on your PowerPoint screen. Um, but if you have questions along the way, Ava will be able to manage some questions. So dedicate at least 20% or at least 30 minutes of morning or after school program time to physical activity. And if you've got that full day, you're gonna want 60 minutes. Provide physical activities that youth are active for at least 50% of the time. And when we talk about activity, we're looking for moderate to vis vigorous physical activity. That's MVPA. So Ava, do you have any examples of MVPA? Ooh, so when I think of moderate to vigorous, I just think it's getting my heart rate up, it's getting me sweaty, and maybe I'm like running around and jumping a lot. Is that, is yes, that right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So MVPA, you wanna get your heart rate up, you want your breathing to increase, and you want your body temperature to increase. So that's your MVPA. We want to ensure physical activity takes place outdoors whenever possible. Do not permit access to television or movies. Digital device use is limited to homework or physical activity. And we want to limit digital device time to less than one hour per day. So I know we mentioned digital device use for physical activity. Have you seen anything going on in programs or sites for this? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we definitely want to restrict maybe uh, the crutch of looking to television or movies when it's a rainy day outside. But I've absolutely seen uh, programs make use of things like uh, video game systems like the Wii that can get kids up and moving and sweaty and maybe they're playing tennis or dancing. Um, but the key thing with that is we want to make sure that it's not just one kid that's able to be physically active yes. by using that, but we're getting everybody involved. So maybe you're projecting things up on a screen or um, you know, even if it's just a one player thing that we're getting all folks involved in and playing along as well. That's great. And there's a great resource we have at the Alliance. It's called our Fit for a Healthier Generation videos. They're on YouTube, they're on our Alliance website, and they're also on SchoolTube. So if you search Fit for a Healthier Generation, we've got yoga, Zumbo. Do you remember Billy Blank's Tybo? Oh, yeah. I remember Bring having the, the Tybo guys. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> I remember having the VHS of Billy Blank's Tybo. So now we're a little bit better on SchoolTube and YouTube. But um, they're great physical activity videos for all ages. You can put them up on a screen. And so those are a free resource you can access. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I know I've heard a lot from uh, different summer camps and parks and rec agencies that STEM is a really hot topic. Yes. And they're worried about maybe implementing um, this type of physical activity standard while also trying to achieve some of their STEM um, goals and providing opportunities for STEM. So Stephanie, what do you think about um, integrating sort of um, healthy access to digital devices or sort of physical activity games with your STEM goals as well? Yeah, I think that's really important. I think that's something that, you know, a lot of programs are starting to do. And do you have any good resources for any STEM related? Yeah, I mean, I think it's about creativity. It's about layering things together. So gardening is absolutely mm -hmm. STEM. It's getting kids outdoors. Um, you know, anything having to do with kinetic movements or um, building and moving uh, is absolutely connected to STEM and you know we can talk about a little bit more in the healthy eating but um, cooking is chemistry so <laughs> and they don't need to be separate things they can be layered on together and researching recipes researching gardening uh, methods and you know utilizing technology in order to help us make us more active um, still allows you to be doing the HEPA standards and your STEM goals at the same time exactly and something that was mentioned in the last couple of sessions is role modeling and I think that's really important with these physical activity criteria you want to make sure that you're encouraging your staff to role model the physical activity so if they're having the kids get up and do a game make sure the staff are doing it as well. If you're doing a silly dance, have the staff do it as well. It gets the kids motivated, seeing that the adults are doing it. So that's a great thing we want to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. So if anybody has any questions about the physical activity standards in particular, um, we can take them at this time. But Stephanie, what do you think is the most common um, question that folks have when it when it comes to the challenges of being outdoors whenever possible. Yeah, I mean, weather can be an issue. I know when I was working in California schools, it wasn't as much as an issue. And when I moved to the East Coast, you know, then we recognize yeah. the cold weather and things. So it's really having some ideas in your back pocket for physical activity when you're inside. Um, so thinking about really having a plan for those rainy days and having policies right. around kind of inclement weather and making sure that your staff understands maybe when it's not safe to bring the kids outside temperature-wise 
eyes, uh, things like that. Absolutely, it's clarity. Maybe what's really hot for me or what's really hot for the kids might be what's really hot for a parent. So um, being really clear, maybe having that really clear policy about what exactly, whenever possible, what does that even mean? Is there a mm -hmm. specific temperature um, guideline, a humidity guideline, um, maybe safety alert guidelines if you're in a more urban area, um, but just, you know, that clarity so that parents can send their kids prepared too with a with maybe a rain jacket if it's going to be a little misty, but you can exactly. still go outside. And you also mentioned parents. I think when we're looking at our physical acti activity criteria, we want to think about how we can also get parents, guardians, families involved. So maybe doing some of those physical activities with the kids during drop-off time, pick-up time, encourage those families to get involved. You know, in the last session they mentioned, you maybe get three or four families, that's a success. So definitely open it up so the physical activity is offered maybe when there's pick up and drop off. I love that idea. I would love yeah. to play uh, some, maybe some running tag or something like that after a day of commuting, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Great, so um, we'll allow some additional physical activity questions to come in if you guys have any, but I think uh, we're gonna move yeah. on to the healthy eating. Yes. All right, so let's explore some of the Commit to Health Healthy Eating Standards. We're gonna start off, serve a fruit or vegetable at every snack and meal. You know, we always wanna try to get something that's fresh, but we wanna highlight that frozen or canned is also acceptable. Um, so if it's something where maybe it's in the winter, you can't get certain produce, you can use your frozen or your canned. Oh, I love frozen blueberries. Those oh, are like yeah. my favorite. <laughs> Toss those in a smoothie. Yeah. Um, serve only foods with no artificial trans fat. So this can be a tricky one. How do you think you can find out if something has artificial trans fat? trans fats. All right, so Stephanie, I know you're the registered dietitian, but for me, I think I just flip it over and look at the nutrition label and, and there's something on the nutrition label, right? That's yes. trans fats? Yep, so they'll, on your nutrition label, there is a trans fat section and then there's also in your ingredient panel, you can look to see if there's partially hydrogenated oils. Um, and sometimes with trans fats, you're gonna have foods that are maybe fried, uh, some of your bakery items, things with margarine in them. So that's a little bit of an easier way to look at that. Mm -hmm. You want to serve only whole whole grain rich products. So to figure out if your product is whole grain rich, you want to look at that label and see if it says whole grain as the first uh, ingredient. So that's whole wheat flour, whole grain oats. So again, make sure that's the first ingredient on there unless it's water. <laughs> we want to serve only non-fat or reduced fat yogurt and cheese. Serve only lean meat, skinless poultry, seafood, and then don't forget those vegetarian protein sources, our yeah. legumes and beans, our eggs. You know, this can really help out if you've got any religious or cultural considerations. You can really turn to those vegetarian items. Uh, serve only packaged snacks or, f or frozen desserts that meet our smart snacks guidelines. So we're actually gonna kind of take the guesswork out of the smart snack guidelines today and we've got some great tools to show you through the Alliance. We've got a smart snack calculator and a product navigator. So we're gonna be looking at that today to help you kind of figure out if it is smart snack compliant. Right, so there are the USDA maybe um, after school supper nutrition requirements, there's the summer food nutrition requirements, and then there's these USDA smart uh, snack requirements. So we want to take the guesswork out of that for you because it can be really confusing. Um, we don't need you memorizing sodium levels and um, sugar levels and things like that of your foods, um, but we do want to make sure that you have access to those tools and resources, like Stephanie said, um, that can just help calculate that stuff for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then we want to always provide plain water at all times to both our youth and our staff. And I love that it highlights youth and staff. Yep. It's important to keep everybody hydrated. And something fun that you can do to jazz up your water, toss in some fruit. You can even do a spa water with cucumber and lemon. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got anything left over from your snack or your meal, toss that into your water. Maybe my frozen blueberries I talked yes, about before. Your frozen blueberries, <laughs> frozen yes. Too. Uh, then we want to serve only plain low-fat milk, plain or flavored non fat milk or your milk alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, serve only 100% fruit or vegetable juice with no added sweeteners. And so added sweeteners can kind of come by different names. So we can look at sugar, fructose, corn syrup, you know, make sure you're recognizing that. So you can have 100% fruit or vegetable juice, but we want to make sure that there's no added sweetener to that. And then um, along with the beverages, serve no soda, sports drinks, juice drinks to your elementary um, and middle school. And then serve no full calorie soda or full calorie sports drinks, again, to your element, elementary and middle. But to give our high schoolers a little bit more choice, we can have diet or low calorie beverages. So some of your diet sodas and low calorie uh, sports drinks. And then finally, uh, serve only non-caffeinated beverages, that's elementary, middle, and high school, so no caffeine. Yeah. Yeah. And so these 
standards, Stephanie, they all have to do with sort of the, the snacks and the meals that are being offered, but they should also be used maybe for the foods and beverages that are sold at special events yes. or um, offered, you know, in accordance with field trips maybe you can look at um, or maybe sold as part of like a fundraiser or a s store or something yeah. like that. Yeah, the best thing we can do is have consistent messaging for our youth, so thinking about those parties, mm -hmm. extra things, it just makes it easier and better for the kids if everything is consistent, so if we follow those guidelines. So this is really where that education for your staff comes in, right. maybe education for your parents, you know, and understanding these guidelines, you know, across the board makes it easier for everyone. Right, absolutely, and having these same guidelines be the bare minimum standard for healthy role modeling for your mm -hmm. staff so they know exactly. exactly what's expected of them. Exactly. Yeah, so we have a couple questions coming in. Um, you know, folks uh, are asking about, you know, sometimes there's different things going on at our program locations. So some of the kids that are participating in the meal or the snack program may not necessarily be the same kids participating in the sports and the physical activity. And I think that's so interesting because um, especially when it comes to growing your meal programs, whether they're snacks, um, breakfast or lunch or supper, um, it's definitely important to try and get as many kids engaged in those programs as you can, not only because it increases sort of the financial viability and sustainability of the programs, um, but because it creates an environment where everyone's eating the same foods together. So I would definitely look to interact with your coaches, interact with those other types of um, sports and physical activities that are happening maybe at your camps or um, at your recreation centers at the same time and see if you can get everybody together and eat those meals um, as one and take little breaks in between. Um, that's a great way to make mm -hmm. um, nobody feel like they're isolated or ostracized during those meal programs, but the really inclusive, positive atmospheres that everyone's sharing a meal together. Exactly. Yeah. And I think our next question actually touches on our next piece, yeah. um, going over our youth and family education information. So the question asked, does HEPA require that we reach out to the same children with physical and nutrition education? Great question. Let us write in. Yeah. We want to be offering evidence-based nutrition education to youth and then also offer evidence-based education materials about nutrition and physical activity to families through pamphlets, newsletters, email blasts. So that's really touching on both right there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And this can be done in a lot of creative different ways, you know, um, whether it's sending home maybe that that meal calendar that you already are going to send, maybe it's monthly or weekly, include right on that meal calendar so that the parents know what snacks and breakfast or lunch are being offered, um, that they're getting maybe a nutrition tip at the same time, or um, they're getting some additional information about the physical activity of the week that they can do at home with their kids. So make use of the things that are already being sent home to your families, um, in addition to providing you know those special events or um, okay. inviting them to do field trips or, you know, other types of activities where you might be cooking or gardening and things like that. Yeah, and you know, this mentions evidence-based nutrition education. Mm -hmm. How can we really know if something is evidence-based? Do you have any tips on that? Yeah, you know, it's really hard. There's a lot of, there's almost too infor much information out there. <laughs> if you Google uh, nutrition tips or you Google physical activity tips, there's a lot of really good information, but there's also a lot of, you know, inaccurate or not science or evidence-based information. So we want to make sure that um, when we're looking at resources, we want to use the highest quality resources that are science and evidence-based. Some ways to do that is to go ahead and look for you know, those resources that are coming directly from the federal government um, or government uh, locations like the USDA. So um, my, my Plate is a great mm -hmm. resource. All of their materials are free. They're offered in multiple languages as well. Um, the NRPA Foods of the Month curriculum is amazing. Um, also free, very high quality. You know that that information that's being shared um, is definitely science and evidence-based. And then also, you know, looking to your local resources like your university system or, or extension services, they're going to be able to point you in the right direction, absolutely, of those really high quality yeah. uh, nutrition that's education. That's a great point. Help. When I was a dietetics student, I actually had to do um, some hours of volunteering, wow. and I did actually go into some schools and some after school time programs and do nutrition education. So definitely reach out to your universities and see if you can get some staff to come in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's all about forming partnerships because partners yes. are really the way that we're all going to lift each other up. Um, and make this work sustainable and make this exciting and make it something that builds momentum on its own in our communities. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, so when it comes to evidence-based nutrition education though, you know, sometimes people automatically assume that that means cooking. 
but it doesn't have to mean just cooking. Maybe you don't have the supplies, you don't have the, um, the physical space that you feel comfortable cooking, or maybe you don't have a power outlet sometimes at your camps. Um, so Stephanie, what are some other types of nutrition education that can really um, get across to kids, you know, the importance of healthy eating? I think you mentioned gardening. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really great, and this was mentioned in the last session, you know, where is the food coming from? And yeah. I think if the kids see some foods that they're able to grow and then they're actually eat to, able to eat them, I've seen some great programs where they actually have some nutrition education curriculum around kind of how to grow mm -hmm. the foods, the nutrients in the food. So definitely your gardening, you know, when you've got some outdoor space, um, it can be really affordable to kind of create a little outdoor garden and do some growing and work on that. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay, great. So now that we've gone through, and I don't think we have any more questions, but feel free to go ahead and send those questions along if you do have them. Um, we're going to explore a few of the resources that we've already mentioned and we've already talked about that can help guide you to finding um, not only those curriculum and those handouts and those resources, but also identifying those healthy eating uh, standards that we talked about earlier. So right now I'm gonna share my screen with you all and sort of walk you through everything on my computer and how to navigate the Alliance for a Healthier Generation website. So if you have a personal device or a um, laptop handy, or if you're in a conference room and one person maybe has access to it, uh, feel free to navigate to host.healthiergeneration.org. Um, and you can walk through this website with us. All right. So um, when you log into the website um, and you want to make sure that you create your username uh, account, uh, you're going to gain access to a whole slew of resources. They're all free. I definitely recommend that you try and get as many folks um, within your agency signed up on the website so you can all access these same resources. Um, a lot of them are located outside the login page as well because we're not trying to hold them hostage. We wanna make sure that you have access to them. Um, but we wanna also wanna make sure that you have access to some of the other assessment and action planning tools that um, maybe has more uh, personal information about your specific and individual sites and program locations. And it is no cost for anyone to register, correct? Yep, totally free. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right, so are we sharing our screen? Yep, okay, great. So when you first log in, this is what um, the main homepage is gonna look like. You're able to navigate to your dashboard, which is gonna give you sort of a snapshot of what your current assessment results or your action plan um, results look like. So you see here that um, maybe we are doing a good amount of the snack meal and drink quality standards, but there's a couple that we can work on. Um, maybe we can work on some more staff training and some nutrition education. We look like we're in a really good place. So you can also see you have access to, on the left-hand side of the screen, the assessment tool, which you can take together with your staff. We have a, a paper version and an online version um, that'll help tell you which of the HEPA standards you're already doing at your program location, um, which ones that you could potentially work on in the next couple of years. You also see the action plan area. Now we definitely recommend that you don't try and do all the HEPA standards <laughs> at once, so you don't try and implement them all overnight. Um, we wanna work on small incremental changes that build on your current successes. So we advise that you look to three to five goals per year that specifically have to do with the HEPA standards. Now, um, we're gonna explore probably today the most in the tools and resources area and our training opportunities. So in this tools and resources area, you can see you have access to the resource database, some more information about um, the continuous improvement six step implementation process. Um, we have access to our product calculator, food planner, some roadmaps that can help guide you with tips and tricks and ideas on implementing specific standards. Um, you can navigate to our training center, our healthy out of school time blog, and then gain some more information um, about different terms that are being used in the HEPA standards, maybe that we're not so familiar with or we're not quite sure how they're being defined. And just to point out, if anyone's navigating this after the training and you get a little stuck, you have questions, there is a help button on the top right-hand corner. Um, and down at the bottom where Ava just highlighted, there is a phone number that you can call, 1-888-KID-HLTH. And we have our amazing member engagement support team staff, Kayla and Nicole, who can answer questions, help with any technical difficulties. So yep, feel free great. to reach out. <laughs> Um, okay, awesome. So first I wanted to show you our new and notable blog. So this is our Healthy Out of School Time blog. Um, it's managed by my coworker, Daniel Hatcher, who some of you may know, and he's always on Twitter and interacting with folks, and he's the main author of a lot of these blogs. Um, but he tries to blog at least a couple times a week on really you know, timely, topical things that may be going on. So you can see here that we have three steps you can take for healthy role modeling this summer. Um, 
some last minute prizes and raffle gifts because we know it's becoming the end of the school year and it's kind of pizza parties and recognition galore. So maybe some alternative tips and tricks uh, for non-food based rewards that can still get kids really excited and feel really um, recognized and honored. Um, and then we have five ways to strengthen the heart of after school. Just last week was after school professionals awareness week and recognition time. So um, right there, there are some really great ways that you can look at your staff recognition and your staff engagement, which we haven't even talked about employee wellness yet. Um, that's definitely a part part of the HEPA standards, um, but give you some, some really great ideas. If you're ever, you know, feel like you're stuck, go check out the Healthy Out of School Time blog. Great. So um, at the top of our tools and resources page, you're gonna see the resource database. So we talked about sort of science and evidence-based curriculum, resources, things like that. Um, the Re Alliance's resource database is a great way for you to navigate those resources that the Alliance has already reviewed and already looked at to figure out if it's really high quality or not. So um, you can use your same login to get to the Healthy Out of School Time website on this resource database. Um, you can search by keyword, you can search by program filter, so if you're looking for something specifically having to do with this during the school day or out of school time. Um, and you can also select by topics. So let's see, I'm gonna look for healthy out of school time and maybe a lot of these practices are already being done, but I wanna make sure that I can implement a new health and wellness out policy. So let me look here. Okay, so we got great workplace health assessments, um, the FRAC after school meals guide for some assistance, and oh, look here, there's a specific NRPA implementation guide for your healthy out of school time model policy. So within the resource database, we also have really specific things that are catered directly to parks and recreation agencies across the country because you all are such leaders in this work. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for when the th things are modified exactly to suit your needs. And it's great because if the um, resource does not have a dollar sign next to it, that means it's free. And then if anything does have a dollar sign, um, we usually work with the organization or the company to make sure that there is a discount. But as you can see, that whole page, they're all free. So yeah. there's tons of great free resources. And if you're sharing these resources with your staff, this is a great place to bring them to first. Um, you know, staff can really look at what they're interested in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and every day we're adding more things to the resource database. So it's definitely something you want to to recheck in on, especially if you just need some new ideas or maybe you're just, you know, looking to do uh, some more activities with a different age group that yeah. you're not normally working with. Yeah. And we have a question. Yeah. Uh, when adding members through the dashboard, can they make changes to the action plan? That's a great question. Just curious on their abilities from the other end. Oh, that is a great question. So um, yes, you can absolutely add members through the dashboard. Um, you have the availability of uh, setting specific parameters for those members who you add. So you can add them as a team member to your account, which allows them access to make changes to the assessment, to update and make changes to the action plan. Maybe they can write some notes in or, or update sort of where you're at. But you can also um, have them listed just as a fan or a community member, and that allows them to see everything, but they can't actually make changes. So we definitely know and understand that you wanna get your maybe seasonal staff or your part-time staff or your volunteer staff who might be coming from different partnerships to your site involved in this work and able to access all these wonderful resources, but maybe you wanna limit how much control they have over um, your assessment and your action plan. So we do have the option for you yes. to select community member. Yes, great question, Margarita. And we do have staff that provide website walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. So um, at the end, we'll have Ava's information and you can email her if you wanna have a website walkthrough with your staff, we can do that. Yeah, absolutely, we can, we're always available. We have tons of staff and we'll talk about them a little bit um, who are available to provide specific content expertise, um, website expertise to help you plan um, and customize trainings that you're looking to offer with amongst your staff or maybe in your community. Um, and also we have pre-recorded live on, or, pre-recorded on-demand and live trainings available in our resource database, which we are gonna go to right now. Um, and it looks like somebody does have a quick question though. Are workbook activities available for students on your website? That is a good question. I haven't looked to see if there are workbooks. We can search keyword workbook. Let's see. And if not, we can definitely help you navigate them. Um, but there's a bunch of resources for the school, for the school environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and say all programs. Oh, there you um, go. So, oh, look where we have culinary techniques, um, power up wellness programs, um, Wise Guys, which is part of Oregon Wise Guys. Um, so there's definitely some resources here that have sort of specific work, yeah. work activities. Yeah, and you can, anything that's on here that's a PDF, you can print it, make copies. Mm -hmm. 
that's yours to kind of disseminate, so. Yeah, absolutely. All right, great. So Stephanie, you're gonna help walk me yes. through this uh, training center, right? Yes, so okay. this is our Alliance Training Center. This is one of our great newer resources. Um, we actually use this a lot internally as well for internal trainings. Um, I but get assigned some, some yes. training sometimes I have to take. <laughs> yeah. So we've got some great training. So we'll just show you on the left-hand side, we always have our featured trainings. Um, and so again, when you log into the Healthy Out of School Time website, you're gonna wanna click the Training Center button. And then on the left, we've got some featured training. So I'm gonna just have a us show you what it looks like why don't we uh go ahead and look at running start or do you, oh you know what there yeah let's do running start so when you click that you'll um, get asked to launch the training so you'll go ahead and you'll click launch and then it's going to bring up a video so this is really nice you can do this as a group with your staff and kind of watch the trainings together or you can assign trainings to your staff so we do have a number of trainings that are geared towards our out of school time staff um, and this is what they'll look like yeah. Some of them are interactive, you can click kind of where you want to go, um, but yeah, they're great, they're interactive, some of them have some follow-up materials, so definitely check those out, they're free. And if your um, staff are looking to maybe print a certificate, we do have the ability to have them print a certificate, and you can also go back and look at all the trainings you've seen uh, on your transcript, which Ava has up right now. So you can see everything, um, especially I think I think Stephanie just mentioned this, that if you want to assign a training, maybe for your part-time staff, you want them to take maybe the nuts and bolts of nutrition label reading, or maybe it's just a cupcake, um, non-food alternatives that they can utilize in their programs. You can have them actually, you can assign it to them, you can have them actually partake in it, um, and then have sort of that certification, which can be really helpful if you have to onboard staff, um, maybe seasonally, and you only have so much time with them to do your orientation. Um, you can have assign them some homework out of, out of that specific orientation time that they can, uh, you know, be that much stronger youth development professionals. Exactly, and it looks like we have a question from Marilyn. She's asking, since we do have so many sites, do we have to apply the program to all sites or do we just choose some sites? Mm. That's a good question. You know, from my perspective, we see a lot of sites are so different. You know, you've got different youth, different staff, different needs. I recommend doing um, an assessment and using the resources separately for each site, but Ava, do you have any? Yeah, I mean, especially as it comes to parks and recreation, um, that sometimes you'll have a, a specific community center that you might have an after school program going on, you might have a maybe um, adaptable program going on, you might have a um, maybe early child care, daycare type program going on, and then maybe some adult sports leagues or something like that, all happening at the same time. So you wanna make sure that when you're looking at your program locations that you're considering all the programs um, that interact with and affect youth. And maybe for your first couple years, you kind of wanna ramp up and start off slow. Um, but I think that the, the Healthy Out of School Time Assessment is a great tool to help recreation centers that have lots of things going on um, have common language and work together to make sure that there's consistent messaging around healthy eating and physical activity, no matter what programs youth are coming to partake in when they come to your um, after school program site or your rec centers. Also, um, when it comes to sort of what Stephanie was saying, that maybe as an agency, you have lots of different program locations. You have park sites, you have rec sites, you have community center, maybe you have a pool site um, going on in the summer. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're really looking at your agency as a whole system. So ensuring that when kids go to the pool to do programming or they go to the rec center to do programming, are they getting the same consistent messaging across the board? Are they being exposed to the same really high quality environmental influencers um, to encourage those healthy behaviors? So you can again start to ramp up and maybe start off at only a few sites, but we definitely recommend that you try and get as many sites registered on the website and as many sites engaged in this work as you can, even if they're coming at it from sort of different places. Um, that only is able to communicate to NRPA um, that your work that you're doing across your agency is touching so many different locations and so many different program sites. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I just want to show you one more training that we just got added to the, awesome. uh, the training database and that's before, during, and after school physical activity. So this is a brand new training. I haven't even taken it yet. I'm really excited to take it later on today um, that has to do with new ideas about incorporating physical activity into everything you're doing, whether that's arts and crafts time, whether that's before meal time, or um, you know, just generally getting staff involved with physical activity as well. And I love that our trainings usually are about 10 to 30 minutes. This is a 20 minute training, so that's an easy 20 minutes you can do. Uh, right. We don't want you sitting too long. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so um, I think it's time for us to look yes. at our smart food planner. Right? So this is my favorite resource at the Alliance for Nutrition. Um, I know the smart food planner was a labor of love for our content advisors that work um, with on schools with and out of school times for nutrition. Um, this is something that schools and out of school time sites can use. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you kind of some great ways that, again, as I mentioned before, this is going to take the guesswork out of the nutrition piece. So. First, I want to um, have us look at the product section of the Smart Food Planner. So this is great. We're able to really kind of uh, filter through all of these products are compliant with the HEPA standards and they're compliant with your USDA school meal standards. So we're going to have Ava. Ava's looking up some carrot products. You can see on the left hand side you can search by your keyword, you can search by category, um, and then you can also put in that you want to make sure that it is smart snack compliant only. So she highlighted yes. So Ava searched carrots and we've got nine carrot products that you'll see will come up. So that's an easy way that you can go ahead if you're looking for items to purchase. These are items that both can be purchased through your vendor or if you're a program or a site that shops at a big box store. So if you are Costco, you're a Sam's Club, some of these items you can also find at your big box stores. So, so I see here a little that there's a SKU code. Yes. What is that? Mean? So that SKU, that's the code where if you go to your store, you go to your vendor, that's the code you can give them so they can order that item. Right. Um, and you'll see that every item, there's a picture, there's a description, um, and it also shows on the right hand side if it is a Smart Snack compliant item. And um, if you're interested in saving certain items, up in the right hand corner, Ava, we've got Save to List. You can actually create some lists. So maybe you want something for your full day program or you want something just for your after school program, you can create some different lists for each of your sites if you're working at multiple sites. Yeah, or maybe create that shopping list for the staff. Yes, to yeah. <laughs> and I do want to highlight this does work on an iPad, an iPhone, so if you're out buying certain things, it's mobile, it's a great uh, tool that we can use uh, out in the field. Yep. Then we'll check out recipes very quickly. We've got a section of great recipes. I love that a vegetarian item is up at the top, that vegetable, vegetable frittata. If you go into the view recipe, some of the recipes, um, the quantities, they're in larger quantities, so 30, but on the left-hand side, if you want to convert to a smaller or larger quantity, we do have resources to be able to do that. But that recipe is going to give you all the ingredients, the preparation. You can put comments on there if the kids loved it. Um, but this is a really great uh, resource that we have. Absolutely. And then, uh, this is, I think my favorite piece is our menu plans. So we've got some great menu plans to be able to give you some ideas, shake things up, but it's also gonna link you to the products and the recipes, which is great. So we're gonna look at a snack menu plan. We're gonna go to the It's Snack Time menu plan. So I love that it's broken down by week, mm -hmm. uh, broken down by day. It's got great different ideas. But if you look, um, if we go ahead and look at non-fat yogurt up on that top one under Thursday, that's going to take you right back to the products. And it's going to show you all of those yogurt products that are compliant. And you'll see, for example, those Activia yogurts. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen those at my local Costco. So again, those are some products if you're not necessarily working with your vendor or a school district. Um, if you're buying them on your own, there's a product. Absolutely, and if you're just starting to work with your school district, or maybe your school district has not um, been involved in after school snacks or not been involved in summer food before, these um, menus, they're not just utilized by out of school time professionals. So you can print it off, you can give it to your school mm -hmm. district and say, here's a place that we can start from, or here's some modifications that we know we can make from this standard menu that we know is gonna be HEPA compliant and help promote um, healthy eating across exactly. our kids. Exactly, exactly. So if you'll see there um, under Friday, we've got that bean, black bean and corn salad. If you go ahead and click that that's going to take you to one of the recipes and we've got some good celebrity recipes oh, this Rachel is uh, one of our Rachel Ray recipes some of the kids get excited um, so yeah that's it's great it's got the recipe there your ingredients um, your how-to this is a good one maybe that kids can help with you know dump in some cans of corn or beans mm -hmm. um, that's a great one for a site for um, your snacks Great. So that's the menu planner. So we've got snacks, we've got some breakfast, lunch, supper, there's summer on there. So we kind of run the gamut. 
feel free to steal all our menus and all the yes. ideas from them. <laughs> and if you have any great recipes you're using at your sites, please feel free to send them along to Ava. We'd love to get them on here. Yep, we can submit recipes anytime, especially ones that you have uh, time tested <laughs> with yes. your kids. Um, and the last piece we're going to show you is our awesome product calculator. So, you know, you keep hearing smart snacks, smart snacks. So if you're not sure if you're smart snack compliant, one thing you can do is if you're connected to a school district, your food service director, your dietitian at the um, at their program can help you uh, make sure that it is smart snack compliant. But if you're at the store purchasing something or you want to know if something that someone's brought in is smart snack compliant, you go ahead and use our calculator. So we're going to pretend that we have a granola bar that we're going to put in. So granola bar, that product is going to be a snack. And then we're going to go ahead and click next step. So if you notice, there's those little eye buttons in the blue. Those are actually going to explain um, what that means. So whole grain, again, that must contain at least 50% or more whole grain. Um, we talked about whole grain. So let's say that our granola bar does have whole grain oats as the first ingredient. So we're going to click that. Then we're going to enter some nutrition info. And again, you're just going to flip over your product and fill it right in from the back of that. So we're going to say the serving size is two ounces. It's one per container. We're going to say this is 120 calories, one gram of fat, zero saturated fat. Ava, what do we want in that trans fat? Oh, I want it to be zero. Yes, we need a zero there. Sodium, let's say 10. Sugars, let's say one. And then go ahead and click next step. So that is a compliant granola bar. So you're able to kind of plug those numbers in and then you'll be able to see if it's not compliant. You can go back to our product navigator and maybe find some items that are compliant. Great. And this is just such a useful tool, not just for the staff that might be planning, but also maybe if you have teens who are involved and they're looking to work on a service project or work on an entrepreneurial project, um, you definitely want to make sure that they're able to explore and look at and understand what it means to have a nutritionally compliant product, um, what it means to look at the nutrition label and do that kind of math and calculations and things like that. So um, these resources are not just great for you and your staff, but are great for sort of the community as a whole too. Yes. And, you know, get your kids using that calculator. That's a great tool that kids can use if it's on the phone or on the iPad. You know, you've got that one hour that you can use devices. Maybe get them using it, make a game out of it. Yeah. Um, you know, get the kids on this website and tooling around as well. Yeah, maybe a little scavenger hunt or something. Yeah. Great. Well, like we said, these are tools and resources that are available to any of your um, staff, to any of your community members. So let us know if you have any questions about them or if you're looking for something specific that's not in one of these tools or resources. We want to make sure that they are serving your needs absolutely. So we're going to go back to the slides now and st uh, stop looking at the screen. Uh, and again, that is the location of the food planner we were just looking at, foodplanner.healthiergeneration.org. Um, but we also want to talk a little bit about obstacles, and I know we have a few comments and questions on the screen um, about obstacles like um, being able to take place outdoors whenever possible, your physical activities. So we have um, somebody named AC, he said, summer's coming up and we're in a really hot environment. Do we have strategies or resources on getting physical activity outside? So we want to make sure that safety is of the utmost importance, first and foremost, absolutely. Um, so you want to make sure that you have that really clear policy about when staff um, should make that call about when it's time to come indoors or um, if you don't have an outdoor space when you need to cancel programming or move it to an alternate location. Um, so definitely make sure that you have that really clear policy. That policy is communicated to your families and to your kids that everyone knows it like the back of their hand. Um, we also want to look at, you know, alternative spaces outdoors. So maybe you want to look for shaded areas, wooded areas, um, areas outside of just a big open field or a black top that maybe make it feel that much hotter as well. Um, and look for those shaded areas where you can also be engaged in physical activity, but maybe just um, small in the space a little bit that you're doing those physical activities. Um, and then also I know that, you know, when it comes to physical activity and it comes to uh, kids, they love water. So any times that you can get water involved in your physical activity, whether that's a water tag or that's a water obstacle courses and race courses, that's a great way to sort of shield a little bit of the heat from your kids. Just make sure that you um, have sunscreen out there, that you're, you're recovering them after they get <laughs> drenched in water. And a lot of times, as long as you communicate to parents and families that you're going to be having a water activity day and your kids might get a little bit wet, they know to send them in clothes that uh, they don't want them to be ruined or you know get wet temporarily, even though they'll probably dry off. <laughs> Stephanie, do you have any other ideas for what they can do in a, a hot environment? I think also, um, you know, when you're out in nature, look for your shaded areas, your mm -hmm. shaded tree areas. If you've got any covered areas, you know, where you're out of the sun. 
Absolutely, so. absolutely. Okay, so we also have a few uh, questions here. Would baking or steaming be the best way to prepare vegetables? That's definitely an obstacle for folks is that they don't always have um, kitchen appliances or access to kitchens and things like that where they may be able to prepare vegetables. But what about baking and steaming? Do you yes, think those are great ways. Um, another uh, tool that you can use that's great is a crock pot. Yeah. You can put lots of things in a crock pot, let it cook over the time of your program, and then things can be ready, and the kids can help with that, putting items in the crock pot. Yep. Um, also, looking at your blender. Um, I love making smoothies at home with spinach, and so you can make a green monster mm -hmm. smoothie, get the kids to try that. Um, and it's also about educating the kids about the fruits and vegetables they're eating. I remember in Southern California, I was working with a district that was doing some farm to school. They got sugar snap peas. Well, at the first time they served them, the kids were trying to pry them open and pull the little seeds out because they didn't know you could eat the whole pot. So that's a great nutrition education opportunity right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when it comes to what's the best, healthiest way to prepare foods, you know, baking, steaming, roasting is absolutely, they're great. Eating them raw is really wonderful too. Um, you know, boiling, making a soup out of them. So definitely go and check out our recipes. Um, you might be surprised in ways that you can make and a vegetable healthy, um, but still having some, some fun and familiar cooking uh, techniques with those. Um, so we have AC also asked, what are some partners who can, or who are some partners that can help provide us with fresh vegetables? So, so what are some sort of community resources you've heard of? Local farmers, definitely you wanna reach out to your local farmers and uh, work with them. And if you're doing it maybe as a group with some other sites, you know, definitely look into doing some group purchasing um, so that you can get yeah. some maybe some better pricing on your fruits and vegetables. And that's a great um, way for you to interact with your school district if you're not working with them already, yes. right? A lot of times they'll let you piggyback on their uh, purchase orders for their huge schools um, and so they have negotiated prices that are sometimes yeah. really really beneficial and maybe you don't have access to so definitely utilize that school district to try and create that bridge with them awesome well we are out of time Stephanie our time together has just flown by um, I'm gonna post my contact information here on the screen for you please reach out if you have any questions um, if you just want to chat if you want to brainstorm with me I'm here to support you it is my job to support parks and recreation agencies across the country I can also connect you with Stephanie or any of our other nutrition advisors so thank you guys so much for your time today we have a quick 15 minute break before our next session so go stretch your legs and make sure you fill up on your water bottles thanks so much